Welcome back YouTube. In today's video, I want to talk to you a little bit about another issue I've had with my Range Rover Sport that apparently is quite common. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about what happened first. I was driving into London with the family and we got on the motorway and out of nowhere, the steering wheel started to wobble and the whole car started shaking a little bit. And first thing you think of is you got a puncture. Um, I slowed down and I pulled over where I could, where it's safe. I went out, had a little look. It was really confusing. None of the, the tires had a puncture. They all had the pressure. Everything was good. Uh, but it was like a really bad burning smell. Um, so I kind of waited for a minute, made sure nothing was on fire. I bought a fire extinguisher. I bought a few, one for each car. Uh, just paranoia. I think it's a good thing and you should buy one because it's just it's handy like a 10 or 15 quid to get one of the um, Electrical fire ones chuck it in your boot and then you haven't got to watch your brand joy go up in flames one day God forbid that ever happens. But anyway back to what was going on. I swear it's rancid kind of like an acidic -y kind of horrible real nasty smell burning smell But I couldn't see anything. Nothing was wrong with the car. I didn't get it So all you could do you're on a motorway you just you get in you carry on driving so we got into central London, didn't have to drive that far, luckily, got parked up. But when I parked up, we got out of the car and that rancid smell again. It was horrible, like a real burning, almost like a rubber smell, but not. It's hard to describe. It's just like a real nasty, very sharp burning smell. So again, I had a look around, but this time I noticed that my rear right wheel arch had a little bit of smoke coming out of it. I panicked then. Uh, so I looked a little bit closer and... Um, I still couldn't put my, my kind of finger on it, quite literally because it was hot. Um, but it, it turns out, as I later found, um, that it was the electric handbrake. <clears throat> what happens in these cars, out of nowhere, they just bind on. They decide they've had enough and they'll just latch on. Now, it doesn't latch on with enough power to lock a wheel up, but because it binds onto the hub, <clears throat> it is like it's like an old school thing that binds on rather than the, uh, the actual calipers locking on. Um, when it does that, it just obviously burns through because the wheel and the hub and everything is still spinning around, but it's got the um, the uh, the e-brake on it. <clears throat> so over the space of like 15 miles, this thing has been attached to the hub, just smoking and burning and not chucking piles of smoke out the back, but enough that it just burns through. And uh, it, just, it eats your your, um, your parking brake, basically. And because it's electric, it's got a mind of its own. You just kind of flip it on, flip it off, and that's it. There's no proper old handbrake, like in, in you know, real normal cars. Because uh, these are like clusters, you know, luxury SUVs. They have this fancy e-brake, as a lot of cars do these days. Uh, so, anyway, yeah, um, we went into town, did what we had to do, come back. A little bit sceptical about needing to drive home, so I took it easy. Uh, when I got back, no issues at all. There was no smell, um, the, the hub hadn't heated up. So I think it literally was just when I was driving and it was locked on uh, until the point it had burnt through what it needed to burn through, the actual the, the brake um, pad or whatever it's called itself. Um, that was the only time it was stinky and after that there was nothing left to, to burn through. <clears throat> now, funny thing is, um, it still passes an MOT with that. It probably shouldn't, but because it's four wheel drive, I don't know if you know this, but MOT bays and garages, most of them can't test the handbrake on a four wheel drive motor because you can't put the handbrake on um, whilst you're testing it, especially if it's an E, uh, an e handbrake, you know, electric one. Uh, so, funnily enough, my, my um, MOT was due literally like a few days after it happened and most of the independents and obviously the dealers here are booked up for weeks. I was thinking, what do I do? I'm not gonna have a car. Um, so I had to just put it in and kind of not mention it um, and wait and see what happens. Flew through the MOT, no other issues, so that was great. And I kind of went away thinking, mm, okay, so I took it to the dealership, uh, well, the, the local independent guys. They had a look at it, they diagnosed it, and that, that's obviously how I know or knew what was wrong with the, uh, with the car. And that's where we learned about the whole MOT thing, the fact that it won't fail an MOT because they just physically cannot test that part of the car because of the, the four wheel drive system. <clears throat> so got it fixed. It wasn't like a, a massive thing. I think it was like a 150, 200 quid. It was a while ago now. Um, yeah, the only thing to kind of report back is when they did it, they said that the discs were quite low and uh, at the time it was worth changing them because when you you change the, um, the, 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 the parking brake, you have to take the discs off, I think, and to get at them, uh, it's all part and parcel of one big unit. So it's part of the same job, really. You may as well just change the disc because they were running low. Um, yeah, they, they changed them at the same time. So it was an extra 100 quid or whatever for the uh, the disc. The pads were fine. The actual brake pads were fine. 
and uh, <clears throat> yeah, the, the car was good. But if your car has suddenly done this weird thing where you're driving along and then it just suddenly wobbles and you get out and you check and there's no punctures, but there is a smell, this is what it will be. So um, hopefully that has helped you diagnose that weird thing that's just happened in your car and um, explains what the smell is. You probably won't smell it inside the car, but when you get out, it'll be a stench. It's just it's a nasty smell, but you'll very quickly be able to go to one of the wheel arches, one of the rear wheel arches, and you'll see, or you'll smell at least, where the issue's coming from. So yeah, don't panic. It's not the end of the world. It is a bill. It does need fixing at some point, but you, you know, from what I've seen, you can still drive the car. It gets you home safely, at least in, in my experience. Um, the only downside is you don't have your, uh, your electric handbrake, but again, our uh, indie said that it's not the end of the world because you park your car in P, don't you? And when you put it in P, everything locks. So, you know, it, you don't technically need the electric handbrake, but still, when you do get it fixed, obviously keep using it because it might seize again. And if it does, you're gonna get another bill for a few hundred quid. Um, so yeah, I hope this has uh, helped you. If it has, please give the video a thumbs up, um, consider subscribing, and um, yeah, maybe leave a comment. Let me know if you've had the same issue with yours. Thanks for watching.